new to my channel or to my Facebook page. I go live on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. And each day is kind of a little bit different. On Wednesdays, we call it Whip Wednesday. We do a live demo. I share a project that I'm working on. And then on Fridays, we either have a live chat where I'm kind of live telling you what I've been working on and answering your questions, or we have a flash sale, which is what tonight is. And it usually is a bundle of supplies of some kind that we sell with or without a video course. And each time it kind of varies a little bit. So I'm going to say hello to a couple of our friends who are tuning in. Let's make sure that all the audio and technology is working fine. And we're going to jump right into the flash sale kit to show you what you all get because we do still have some in stock. We just had uh, the, the product itself go live on our shop page. And if you're new here, and you've been missing out on the flash sales. The way to shop is always one of two ways. You can go directly to our shop page at craftygemini.com slash shop and you'll see whatever the latest item that has been added to our online shop is. That's usually the, the latest flash sale. Or we also include, if you're watching this on YouTube, in the video description box below the video player, I put a link right there that will say like, click here to get your flash sale kit or um, whatever we're offering. If it's a course, if it's a bundle of supplies, whatever it is. Tonight is actually a little bit different than usual because we have two flash sale options. One is the full kit, supply kit and video course together in one. Or you can also, those of you that have chunky stashes of interfacings, bag, uh, fabric, you know, quilting cotton fabric and things that you want to use already, then you also have the option tonight for the first time we're doing it like this, where you can purchase the video course separately and it is at a highly discounted price. So. Let's say hi to everybody. I'm coming to you here from my home sewing studio. We live in North Central Florida where the weather has been perfect. We actually uh, took a few days off this week and went down to Cocoa Beach um, just to get away and some sunshine. It was actually in the 50s and 60s when we got back up here for a couple hours uh, north of Cocoa Beach. So it, it's wild how just a couple hour drive the temperature changes drastically. But you can probably see my lines from the sunglasses there off my tan. <laughs> All right. So hi, everybody tuning in. Hi, Nancy. Hey, Susan. We got Havana tuning in from Connecticut. Cindy from Northeast Florida, just up the road from me. Tony is tuning in from San Diego. Hi, Tony. Awesome. Hey, Gloria. She says, I can see you and hear you fine. That's always good because we never know if technology is on our side. It's like sometimes you have no issues. Other times it's like you can't get anything to work. All right. Hi, Brenda. She says it's 51 degrees in Southwest Montana. That sounds pretty nice. I bet it's probably drier there than it is here too. Okay, so let's go over the supplies that are coming in tonight's flash sale bundle kit for those of you that are kind of on the fence and still think you might want to snag one. So it the supply kit is like this, and I just pulled two from my stash. I had my employees bundling these up this week. I'm going to actually hold these up for a second. I'm, I want to show you the bag itself, and I've made two samples. Here's one. Now, we always say like you can never have too many zipper pouches. You can never have too many tote bags. This is one that I designed with a very specific purpose in mind, right? Most of the time when we make bags, like tote bags like this that are pretty simple in the shape and the design, we like to box our corners, right? So we have like a thick gusset here. Well, what I have found with those tote bags, and I got plenty of them, <laughs> if you've signed up for any of my bag courses over the years, you probably have made a few in my bag clubs, okay? What I have found with those is that when I want to store or take with me my laptop, and this actually came about from this last trip that we took down to the beach, I needed to take my, my uh, laptop with me and all my big totes, when I put the laptop in, because it's so wide here, it kind of flops back and forth, right? Because there's too much room in there. So unless I'm packing it full of stuff, Anything that's flat, folders, books, an iPad, my laptop, it's just like too much room. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna come up with a super simple, quick and easy tote design that is flat, specifically for flatter items, okay? So this is how the bag looks. We have a little pocket here on the front and actually, I'm gonna slip my phone into it. I have a big um, iPhone, whatever the latest is. I don't know, the, the Max one though, cause I like to get the big ones. And you can see that it fits fine in this front pocket, okay? So your keys, you know, your phone right there. So when you're wearing the bag, right, you can quickly grab your stuff from there. Inside, it's just a big opening. So this is one of the bags. 
okay? And the front pocket is actually a patch pocket that I made using a local botanical, botanically dyed fabric. This is an indigo dyed cotton fabric from a local artisan friend of mine. And uh, each kit actually includes a fat quarter like that, okay? With just kind of unique design, super fun, and it's indigo dyed. All right, so let me show you the other bag here, and this one has my stuff in it. So it's pretty heavy, but you can see my stuff is not jiggling around in there because of the narrow uh, size of this, okay? But now let's go ahead and flip to this camera, B, so I can show them what all I stuck in here. Laptops. Uh, tablets, like iPads and stuff like that, notebooks, binders, books, my seed catalogs, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Okay, so look what I stuck in here. And I just grabbed this binder. I think this is my daughter's piano binder. Okay, so these kinds of binders, that's one thing. I just got this new book from Roots and Refuge Farm. She published her first uh, gardening book, so I had ordered it and it just came. But you can see like a decent sized book is in there. And then my laptop is in here in its case. So this is my Techie Tote. Those of you that have signed up for my bag projects over the years have probably seen this. I wear these, this tote out. But it just has a pocket here. And if you're interested in making something like this for your laptop, um, this is one of my online video courses that I offer. But then the laptop is in here. Okay? So all those different things I was able to stuff into the tote bag. And it's still compact. It holds everything flat. I don't want this going like this and like this, okay? As I'm holding a big tote bag, which is super annoying, especially because it's heavy. And so I thought this would be a great little design. Now, overall, the bag itself is pretty simple to put together. The video course for it, for those of you that are purchasing the kit tonight, is six high definition video lessons. And believe it or not, it's so funny to me because when I look at the bag, say I saw somebody carrying this, I'd be like, oh, that's super easy. But when I start to film it and go through the step-by-step -step instructions, there's over an hour of edited down footage. So it was a little over two hours of filming time. So it's not that simple that you just like throw it together, but I do share with you like I usually do, tons of tips and tricks, okay, along the way. So that's the tote bag. Let's quickly go through what's included in the kit for those of you that um, are thinking of grabbing one tonight. So you're getting one pack, and y'all know, those of you in my bag clubs and stuff know that I have these custom cut so that we have a larger piece. This interfacing is by Bozel, and it is called DuraFuse. It's a crisp, non-woven fusible interfacing, and we'll get into that in a minute because I want to do a little demo for those of you that maybe want to try bag making or wallet making, and you're just... The world of interfacings is so overwhelming. And so if you want to see kind of how it works and how it plays in the shape that it gives this tote bag, I'm going to show you a little quick demo on that tonight. But this is a pack. It's one yard by 60 inches. So just off the bat, I'm going to tell you, I made both of these tote bags, all right? And they're pretty big. The measurements are 15 inches across by 17 and a half inches long, okay? And I made both of those from still one pack of DuraFuse, and this is still what I have left. So I definitely have enough here to make another one of these bags, okay? So with the 36 inch by 60 inch piece, you got plenty to make this tote bag, a couple others, and you'll even have some left over to try out on some of the other projects that I have on my YouTube channel, okay? So you get that. You get the little sign, thank you card from me, of course. You get one full 1,000 meter uh, spool of cotton. This is 100% Egyptian cotton. This is my favorite cotton thread uh, to piece with. And it's every kit is going to have a slightly different color, but they're all like neutrals, okay? So you have a whole 1,000 meter spool of that. You have a 50 inch piece of half inch wide webbing for the shoulder straps, okay? That's what we used here. You can also feel free to customize it if you have like a really um, strong uh, ribbon that you wanna use or you wanna make your own fabric handles, that will work as well. Then we threw in the Crafty Gemini exclusive little notebook. This is includes um, a special artwork from my friend Sarah Watts who designed this for me. These are our cows, Emma and her baby Coco, and then Apple Jacks and Natty. Some cute stuff, banana trees from our homestead here. And it has 44 pages that are all dotted on a grid like bullet journaling type notebooks. So that's there. And then for the fabric, you're getting one yard of a super cool designer quality quilting cotton. I think most of the ones in this flash sale are all uh, art gallery fabrics. 
So you get one yard, and that's actually how much fabric you need to make the tote bag. We use the same fabric for the exterior and the lining. So this was one yard of this print, of this hopscotch print, okay? You still have a little bit left over, but one yard is the minimum, you know, to get the project done. Of course, if you're someone who maybe just bought the video course by itself, and of course you have fabric stash, you can also feel free to do two different fabrics, right? One for the exterior and then a different half yard cut for the lining. That would look cool as well. All right, so that was one yard and then a hand dyed fat quarter. Look how pretty this one is. This is somebody's kit because I took it um, aside to photograph and stuff. So this is one fat quarter of indigo dyed fabric. And the fat quarter is enough to make several of the front pockets. So if you're wanting to make a set of these bags, maybe to give us gifts, this piece here from my fat quarter, and I'll show you what I started off with originally, was this one. How fun is that? I love that hand dyed stuff. It's cool because you can fussy cut, right, where you want the pocket to be, and you get some light, some dark, some cool texture. So this was the original piece that I started off with. This is what I have left, and I was already able to make two pockets, right? One for each one of these two bags. This is these both these front pockets are from the same um, fat quarter. So if you have another project in mind for your hand dyed fabric, that's fun too. But just know that you'll have plenty here to make several of the front patch pockets also. And all of the fabrics that are included in the bundle tonight match with this. I mean, this almost plays like a denim, right? And jeans really go with anything. So we have a lot of cool fun prints. I actually pulled some of the off cuts just to give you an idea of some of the prints that are included in the kit. Obviously this is somebody's kit. So this is one. They're all art gallery fabrics, either art gallery or dear Stella are the prints that we're using or that my employees were cutting this week. So that's what we have. So this is just some of the other options that um, you may get in your kit because it's just an assortment of one yard cuts, right? So you're getting a random yard of one of these fun prints. So we did this, this, and then we have an exclusive sticker. And this is the first time that we've included this sticker in a flash sale kit. So they're cute little scissors. Again, original artwork that my friend Sarah Watts did for me. And then inside the blades here of the scissors, it has the little at sign at Crafty Gemini. Super cute. Another fun sticker that y'all can add to your stuff. I add a ton of stickers to my laptop case, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so all that, and then also the six high definition video lessons that come with the video course. So all that is included in the flash sale bundle. And if you are new to my flash sales, whenever we do a flash sale Friday, the kits, whatever the physical supplies are, ship for free in the 48 contiguous US states, right? If you're an international customer and you make a purchase, we will just send you an email with an invoice and we'll invoice you for what the actual shipping cost is. Unfortunately, um, especially with the shipping prices continuing to increase, we cannot obviously offer free shipping overseas on something like this. Okay. And the bundle itself weighs one pound. So it's quite a good chunk of goodies. Let me put this back because this is somebody's kit. I don't want to mess anything up. So the thread, the webbing, the patch pocket fabric, the one yard fabric that you need to make the bag, the, uh, little notebook, super cute, the card, the thread, and the Durafuse. Now the Durafuse, we're running low on it, so if you are wanting to maybe purchase more of the Durafuse packs, we did already place a new order that's it's hopefully coming to us in the next week or so. So if you see that it's set to back order, you can order, and as soon as we get it in our hand, the order that we have on its way, then we will obviously ship it out to you, okay? And this was just another kit, but y'all can see the fabric that went with that one. Okay. So that is what we have. I, Janet says, woohoo on the new sticker. I know some of you order from us so much. We definitely appreciate it. And a lot of you have like the same stickers over and over and over again. So I thought, well, let's, let's get one of the new ones in this bundle so that, um, some of the longtime customers get to add another little sticker to their stash. All right. So I'm going to do a little demo of the do 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 refuse. And I'm going to show you kind of how I did it in the video course. And, and just so you know, when we do these flash sales and, and for this one, for sure, the bundle itself, you get all the stuff I covered and free shipping in the U S and you get instant access to the video course lessons. Now for this one, we do have to add you manually. So just give us a couple hours and we'll end up doing that. Some of you are already in, if you have the supplies and you don't need to buy the kit, but you'd like to sign up for the video course, the link for the video course only is also in the description box below. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece out of this. 
And the course price is also on sale. So that's what I was saying early on that we are doing kind of two flash sales, one that includes the physical supply kit and one that's just for the video course. So right now I set the price to 20 bucks. Tonight's Friday, March, whatever, 5th. And so Saturday and Sunday, so March 7th, Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, the price is going up to the regular price. So if you want to get in on the video course, you're saving, what, $27 right now off the regular cost of the video course. So that's always an option if you want to do that. Okay, so I have just a little piece of uh, cotton fabric here. And the Durafuse, one side is shiny, and the shiny side is the side that has the adhesive on it. The other side has more of like a matte papery finish, okay? Now remember, this is a non-woven fabric. It's or, or interfacing. It's a synthetic. This is not cotton. You do not want to hit this, whether the adhesive side or the back side of it, with an iron. It will just crumple up and melt on you. Okay, so we always want to press from the fabric side. So I laid this out shiny side up, so that's the glue, the adhesive side that's going to fuse to the fabric, and then I'm going to place the wrong side of the fabric onto the gluey side. So this demo I wanted to do because I have heard in the past from um, students where like they try out a new interfacing and they're devastated because they're like, oh, I hate that interfacing. I just can't get it to fuse. It gets super wrinkly. And so I think that this is one of those interfacings that if you don't know how to apply it correctly and if you're not patient with it, you might think that the interfacing is no good, but I'm about to change your mind because it is the bomb. This is one of my most favorite interfacings when it comes to handbag making, kind of small pouchy type of projects and organizers, um, wallets, that kind of stuff. Of course, every interfacing has its purpose, right? Like this would not necessarily take the place of a fusible foam or a foam interfacing, but it's cool to kind of play around with the different ones so that you can see how it works in different applications. Okay. Um, thanks, Tamara. She says, great idea to offer the course separately. Well, y'all asked a million times and I finally listened and got my act together so that I could offer it. <laughs> Beth says she just bought the video course. Awesome. I was telling my husband, I'm like, if they're anything like me, I know they have a stash of all this stuff. And people that have been in my bag clubs, y'all probably have a stash of Durfuse sitting right there. Maybe you made my travel trio. Um, what other things? The Diva wallet. We used all, we, we used that Durfuse in a bunch of projects. Okay. So here it is. All right. Let's see. Okay, great. Some of you are saying that you got the video course. Awesome. Okay, glad to hear it. Hi, Maida. She says, your neighbor from Gainesville down the road. We live just north of Gainesville here in Florida. Okay, so the fabric is on here. So this is what happens. A lot of times you open the interfacing. You don't even read the manufacturer's instructions, right? You just, you fuse it like you would a cotton fusible interfacing. All right. So what happens? A lot of people will hit it with the hot iron and then they're like, okay, but look, it's like didn't stick all the way and I can peel it off. What is going on? Right? Immediately people are like the interfacing don't work. Something's wrong with my iron. It's the interfacing. I've scorched off the glue. Not the case. Here's my tip. Water bottle. Y'all remember this little spray bottle? We got them in stock. We ordered, um, I think we're running low already. As soon as I post a picture, people are like, she has them. So if you want one of these, you can always purchase anything that I feature that I talk about in these videos and live, uh, live stream events. We carry it in our online shop at craftygemini.com slash shop, okay? Uh, like I said, we're running low on the bottles. They hold about 10 ounces, but we just set it to back order because I've already have a big order on its way to me. So if you want to get one, right, just make the purchase, uh, even though it show, it may show back ordered once we sell out. And as soon as we get them in stock, we'll ship them to you. These don't take us long to get, but a couple days. So super light mist. You can't even really, there we go. Now you can see that there's actual water on my hands. So what I do is I missed my fabric, and this is just regular water. I talk about this almost every week, I think, that I don't put water in my steam iron, even though it can take it, right? It's a steam iron. I uh, spray the fabric because um, we live on a well, and we have very hard water, and I ain't trying to deal with the whole cleaning of an iron and all that stuff. It's the same idea. We're adding heat and moisture, so that's what I want. So I sprayed that with water, and now I'm going to take my sweet little time fusing and allowing the heat of the iron to steam, right, with the water that I've just sprayed, onto the interfacing, 
and then that helps kick off the adhesive so that it can then stick. Now notice what I did. I started off on this corner. When you are using fusible interfacings in general, do not go here and then jump to here because what you're going to get in the middle is like a big bubble. Okay. The fabric gets flat and fused at the same time. So you kind of want to work in one direction. You see this? We don't want that, right? So I would work away from where I've just fused so that I'm kind of smoothing the fabric out as I go. So like this, like this. Okay, good. You can see that. And you see how I have a little bit of the Durafuse still sticking out. I'm going to avoid at all costs pressing my iron on that. It will shrivel up and melt. And if you do it enough times, you're going to end up with like gray and black stuff on your iron. So avoid it. So I was about to pick it up and then I thought, give it a second. That's like rule number two. Okay. One is like smoothing out. Two, do not move the fused interfacing to the fabric until it has cooled. Because when it's still hot, the interfacing is still melty, right? It's melted down. So I notice a lot of students will like hit it with the heat of the iron. And then right there they go and peel and they're like, Oh, it just peels right off. You haven't even given it a chance to set. That glue needs to cool to get like nice and stuck to the fabric. So avoid moving the panel as well as lifting anything up until it has cooled. And by cooled, I mean, sometimes it can take 30 to 45 seconds. The iron that I use is so hot, it does take a little while. Okay. Yvonne says she doesn't put water in her iron either. I just, once I started doing this, I never even went back to it or bothered. I know some people like buy distilled water. I, I ain't buying water. So I just prefer to mist it, steam it. And it's the same thing for prepping, you know, fabric for, for quilt blocks. If you prefer just to steam versus starch. So notice I've kind of spent a good long time here, pressing and pressing and pressing. And you want to do that. After I let this cool, I'm going to give it like another 30 seconds or so. Oh, Creative Trend says, addicted to all things Crafty Gemini. Of course I got the course. Hi from NOLA. Hi. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, Clinton and Lorraine are asking, do you sell the T-Fall iron? I don't, but I have a video where I share this, where I talk about like my favorite irons on YouTube. You can just do a search for Crafty Gemini irons. Uh, and the video will pop right up. And then in the video description box there, I have all the links for all the different irons that I use for different purposes. And this one is definitely in there. I have like five of them because we use them in all our classes, our retreats. We took them on our cruise last year, all that. Okay. So now let's check this. So here's what I do. You cannot assume that just by pressing it, everything is good. And, and if you sign up for the video course or you got the bundle tonight, you'll see this because I spent a good bit of the class going over this and showing you how to troubleshoot any bubbling that you might get in your project. I can feel right here, and this is how I check it. On the fabric side, I will touch and see if everything feels smooth, and it does. If I felt any bubbles, then I would flip it over to this side. Wow, I did a good job, y'all. <laughs> I was hoping I would have some bubbles so that I could help you troubleshoot it. But if you sign up for the class tonight or the, bu or the bundle, you'll see what I'm talking about because you can see it on the camera. So sometimes you'll see where it like looks like it's wrinkly and bubbled. And it, it almost like if you didn't know any better, you might think that you scorched the interfacing. But all you have to do in those instances is flip it back. Because remember, we never want to hit the, uh, the interfacing with the iron ever. We always want to be pressing from the fabric side. That's kind of our pressing cloth, right? Our buffer. So then if I felt like a ripple or a bubble somewhere here, I would mist it again with the water, wait maybe 10 or 15 seconds till the cotton fabric absorbs that moisture and then hit it again with the iron. But you can see here, this has not stuck completely. You know why? Well, because I have Durafuse sticking out here and I avoided going up against the edge with the iron, right? So what you want to do in those cases, like if you cut your interfacing a little bit too big, is just to trim it up. I'm going to trim away this Durafuse, say I would, was cutting it to size or whatever, so that I no longer have the Durafuse sticking out and then I can take this back to my ironing board and then really hit the edges, right? Because then I don't have to worry about having any of the Durafuse on there. And that's how you'll go back. And you're pretty much always going to have to touch up those edges because no matter how great of a, do of a job you do, and I'm just misting along the outer edges here, no matter how well you cut it, you usually still have like a little bit of it not stuck around the outer edges. So that is what I'm doing. I'm just going to go right around the perimeter of this rectangular panel. Isn't this fabric super cute? 
It's just like a bunch of geometric shapes and little doodles and stuff and, and in different colors. I think whoever of y'all gets these kits, um, you're going to have a fun time making your bag. It's going to look super cute. Okay. Oh, Sheila, great question. She says, do you ever use your clapper on this? Actually, I do. And you'll see that in the video course where I use the clapper on it. And this would be great. And, and of, oh, and, and let me remind y'all, we got these back in stock. I know we were sold out for a bit. They were on back order, but we have them back in stock. And this is such like a must have tool that I will definitely keep, keep them in stock and keep reordering. So in the video course, Sheila, great question. I do show you with the clapper. So where I specifically like to use it, of course, if we're working on any kind of hems or we're setting seams or anything like that, it's great. But also when you're troubleshooting your fuse job here, if you see that you have any bubbles, that's especially a great point to spritz, hit it with the iron. And then like, especially if it's bubbly, you're going to hold it there with this and it'll help set that super flat, nice and flat. Look at that. Whew. Okay. So this was a cut edge where I cleaned it up. And you can see, can y'all see that? I cannot even separate this thing. It's, it's not going to separate. So it's now like a papery, I don't know how to explain it. Yesterday I was, I was playing with this and I was like, you know, it kind of feels, if you've ever used craft text before, that was kind of a, a popular product. Do I have some here? No, I think it's in another bin, but it's kind of like a, a thick papery kind of um, textile that was popular for a bit and people were making wallets and backpacks and all kinds of stuff and if you like crinkle it up and then open it back up it had the look of like um, weathered leather like that kind of a feel to it so because the Durafuse is a crisp and non-woven fusible interfacing you can see that it's like stiff but look it still bends it's like this weird middle point and you have no added bulk because there's no foam or batting or fleece or anything. So if you have a project in mind and maybe you haven't thought of like what interfacing would work in that situation, I would definitely try the Durafuse because look, it's, it's like paper thin. So it feels almost like a, like a textile cardstock. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's, it's one of those things that you have to like try it out in different applications to see where it works, where it doesn't. And then you have like this built up archive of knowledge. When you see a pattern, you're like, aha, I have the perfect fabric for that. I know what interfacing to use, right? Um, Wendy's asking, how does that interfacing compare to SF 101 or fusible fleece? She says, is it like foam? Okay. So SF 101, fusible fleece and foam that you mentioned in your question are all completely different um, uh, interfacings. Okay. The fusible foam adds bulk and lightness and airiness, but structured without added weight. Okay. That's the foam, um, which is what I use in my techie toe. So this has been interfaced with foam interfacing. Oh my gosh. This thing is like four years old. Look at that sliced. Okay. I probably need to make a new one. I should do this as a sew along. Um, but this has foam interfacing. Okay. It's chunky. It's soft. And it's like more for, for bags and, and you see it a lot, mostly for bags or wallets or small baskets, that kind of thing. SF 101 is um, the Pellon version of what I use a Bozo product called fashion fuse. And that is a lightweight, 100% cotton, uh, uh, woven fusible interfacing, which is oftentimes used fused in a similar manner to this, but to the lining fabric of a bag. So it's kind of like having two layers of a quilting cotton together. So totally different from the foam. And then the fusible fleece can most often, at least in the projects that I design and make, can be replaced or can substitute the foam sometimes. It won't get the same shape, but like in a pinch and you want to make a bag or whatever, you can usually use either like a lofty quilt batting or a fusible fleece. It adds the puffiness, definitely adds more weight than the foam. Um, but it, it has a loft to it that this, this, this is something totally different, you know? So, I mean, look at that. It's like so fun um, to play around with these different types of things. Okay. Um, Cecilia says, I really like the Durafuse. And Robin says, I love Durafuse. It's great because you can really get overwhelmed with the number of interfacings and things and what they're used for. So that was a great question, Wendy. It, it, it's, it's funny to hear people ask about like, what I would call probably the three most common interfacings used in bag making, but they're all totally different. <laughs> okay. I was trying to see if I had one of the other ones here, but I don't, I have them all packaged up or, or cut into scraps and bins. But anyways, I actually have a video on my YouTube channel on, um, 
fabric inter or like handbag making interfacings video. So type in, if you do a YouTube search for Crafty Gemini bag interfacing, you'll see a video and it has a ton of information and I go through like the most popular ones and I show you projects that they're used in. So I think that would be a good one for those of you that maybe are new to bag making. Okay. All right. So that is that. Do we have any of the kits left? If we can have a look just so I can give y'all an update. That is the Durafuse. Remember, we do sell the product by itself separately and it is on sale. And the size that we sell it at is 36 inches, so one yard by 60 inches. And it is a special cut that you won't be able to find because I get it special ordered. I have for years because of our bag clubs. For when we use them, I wanted a larger chunk for you to fuse it to, right? When we're doing big things. Huh? Okay, so we still have several of the kits. If you're wanting to get into it and maybe you're, again, not sure of the different interfacings, don't know where you can find things, and you want to get the actual supply kit, the link is in the description box below for you here on YouTube. You can also find it in the chat here on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook. Okay. Um, let's see. Anna Maria says, I meant to order the clapper with the bundle and she forgot. Am I able to add it to my order to save on shipping? Yes. So if you go to the site and order the clapper in the notes section of your order, just let us know, Hey, I ordered the kits. Can you go ahead and include the bundle there? And so when my team gets together to ship all the stuff, they will, um, uh, refund you the shipping on the one. Okay. Okay. Great. So I don't see any other questions on here about the Durafuse. I was hoping I had some bubbles, but man, you can see. So if you've used Durafuse before and you've had bubbles, now you know the trick, right? Mist it with the fabric and hit it with the hot iron and take your time. On the large panel, when we make these bags in the course, okay, this is one full panel. So you're going to spend a good bit of time misting, fusing, checking for bubbles, flipping, going back and forth. But I absolutely think it is worth it to spend the time because as you can see, the nice crisp finish that we get to the bag, it's just so pretty. And then of course I share with you my tips. Oh, let me zoom it out so you can see. Look at, look at that lining y'all. Look at that. No bubbling. There's no puffiness and the lining is loose. The lining is not stuck to the exterior, but look at that. That's the kind of lining I like to see. It just falls in there, perfect to size, no bubbling, no nothing. How cute. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, you can tell that I love to teach and I love to make stuff. I'm still like, it doesn't matter how long you quilt or so for. Every time you finish a project, you're still like want to run around the house. Last night I told my husband, nobody was here. Nobody wanted to see my finished bags. I was like, hello, look what I made. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So Maria's asking how long is the special price? So if you're asking about the special flash sale price for the video course itself, the price goes up on Sunday. So I'm just giving y'all the weekend. I know not everybody can join us here live to watch the live chat or the flash sale live here on Friday. So I'm giving everybody till the weekend, Sunday night at midnight, the price is going up to the regular price. Okay. So if you're wanting to get in on the class, then definitely take advantage of it before Sunday. If you want the bundle, go ahead and grab it because once we sell out, it's a wrap. Okay. And then um, I guess I'll just go over the kit again, like what's included. You get uh, uh, access to the six high definition video lessons. There's over an hour of footage of step-by-step -step lessons showing you how to make the bag. You get the Durafuse interfacing that we were just talking about in a special cut, 60 inches by 36. An exclusive Crafty Gemini notebook. This is like a, a bullet journal notebook. It has the, the gridded dots. And then you get a yard of designer quality quilting cottons for the exterior and lining of the bag. And then you get one hand dyed, this is indigo dyed fat quarter. It's hundred percent cotton. Super fun. I got this from a local artisan friend of mine who dyes fabrics. And every once in a while we have flash sales that feature her fat quarters. I know a bunch of you out there have, uh, have ordered them before and have, I've seen them used in your projects. Then you get a crafty Gemini sticker, my little thank you card, and then a spool, 1000 meter spool of hundred percent Egyptian cotton, uh, piecing thread. It's a 50 weight thread. It's by Wonderfill. It's called confetti. And it's like my favorite piecing thread for sewing on cotton fabrics and, and patchwork and stuff like that. All right. So that's that. And then you get, of course, unlimited access to the video course. So once you're in my video courses on any of them, you never lose access to them. 
once you pay for it, you can always go back and watch the videos. And then of course, if you have all this, oh, and it includes also the, um, the webbing that you need for the handle. So basically the, the kit includes everything that you need to make one bag. You have more fabric of the hand dyed fat quarter to make multiples because I still had left over and I made these two pockets. And then you have plenty of Durafuse to make at least three bags total. And Yep, and then the fabric, uh, the one yard of fabric is just enough for one bag. And you have some left over, but not enough for another bag, okay? Um, Brenda says, could you please open the notebook? Would love to see the inside. So let me grab one of mine so I don't have to open it up from the packaging there. But I have my own. So it's the dots, the bulleted dots. And we sell these notebooks by themselves too in the online shop. But you see the pages? They're like pale gray dots, like a bullet journal. Okay, and it includes um, 44 pages with the artwork, Crafty Gemini artwork that my friend Sarah Watts did. So that's a quick look on that. There's some other close-up pictures um, in the shop page for the notebook. So if you just look for Crafty Gemini notebook, you'll see it. Okay, do do do. Nancy's asking, what size needle do you use? So for this project, believe it or not, I know sometimes for bag making, a lot of us like to use like 9014 universal needles or top stitching or microtex, depending on the product that you're going to be sewing through. If it's thicker stuff like faux leather, cork fabric, uh, multiple layers of fabric with foam, plus a lining maybe that has the fashion fuse or the SF 101 on it, then yes, I can see where it's more easily, uh, to kind of lean towards a 9014 needle. For this, again, it's so paper thin, I just use an 8012 universal. Easy peasy, and it sews up like a dream. If you've ever started, when you started sewing, if you ever sewed through paper first, you're gonna love this. And it's probably one of the reasons I starch my fabric whenever I'm cutting out most of my patchwork pieces for quilt. I will heavy, heavy starch it, and then press it because it's crisper to cut and to sew with without the fabric getting all distorted and manipulated on you. So I think this is probably one of the reasons I love this interfacing because it feels like that to me, like a crisp cardstock. Okay. Uh, let's see. Cynthia's asking, will the faux leather bag video be a separate course without the kit? Yes. After we did this one here, I'm going to be working on that, Cynthia. So if you want to check back tomorrow morning, maybe, it'll be up on the site as a, as a standalone course. So I think that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. So Don is asking, how much is the class and the material? So the bundle with the course is on sale for $66. And if you use the link right there, it'll have all the information. You'll see the pictures. You see everything that's included. There's a full list of what everything is included because I kind of went over the things pretty quickly here. Um, you'll see everything that's included and it's free shipping in the US and then of course you get the unlimited access to the video courses or to the video lessons of the course there's six separate high definition videos and the course itself is um, just over an hour worth of videos and the videos are broken down it's not like a whole long chunk that you have to sit through it's broken down into like the overview of the project and the fabric prep then prepping for the fabric pocket and the pocket itself actually includes a template so you'll have the PDF download it's included in the course so that you can print this out and use this as your pocket template which I I show you obviously in the course how to prep it and attach it and um, sew the bag together lining and all okay so I go super step by step and there's six separate videos this okay um, let's see Kathy's asking can we pick the fabric in the kit that we want um, no not really you can put in the note section of your order, like if you want a specific color and my team, when they're packaging them up, can try, like if they're grabbing from the kits and they see, oh, she wants blue, here's a blue one, we'll can throw it in there. But it's not like we have an inventory for people to choose from in the kits, right? So most of our kits include some type of a mystery um, element to it because of that. And then um, either that or they'll all be identical. And in this case, they're not all identical. Okay, let's see. Um, will I be getting more of the faux leather in Valerie is asking the answer is yes I actually placed another big order so we'll be getting more of the faux leather in both for previous projects that we've already done that feature the faux leather y'all are asking about a different project but um, and then potentially other new ones that I will um, design with the faux leather sheets as well okay all right, awesome. Okay, thank you everybody for tuning in. Rose is asking about the clammy mug. Is it microwave safe? I believe that it is. I don't use a microwave, but I remember from when we ordered them, it is. Okay. 
All right. Um, Sue says, I ordered the video class and the interfacing. Is the interfacing the same size as it is included in the kit? And it is. All the Durafuse that we carry and that we sell, I always order it at this cut at the 60 inch piece by 36 inches. So yes, Rose, if you were able to get a pack of the Durafuse, um, then it will come in the same size of the ones that are included in the kit. I was trying to see if I had the, the cover sheet to my Durafuse, the one that I had already opened, but yes, they all include the big chunk, the big pack, okay? And it is a good bit. And this retails for like $19.50 and we sell it regular on our site. We have it listed at $15. And then of course, if you got it in the bundle, it was further discounted because the whole bundle plus the class retails for $92 and I'm selling it for 66. So a great savings, of course, if you're gonna take advantage of the supply kit, like the flash sale bundle plus the video lessons, okay? Okay, awesome. Well, we are gonna call it a day. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for all your great questions. I cannot wait to see your projects, to see your different round bottom tote bags. And I hope that you too can find a good use for these tote bags like I designed them for, keeping notebooks, books, laptops, gadgets, iPads, and stuff like that that you don't want kind of clanking around on a wider, more gusseted tote bag. So thanks again for tuning in. Remember, I go live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel and Facebook page. Now, if you want to be kept in the loop, make sure that you head over to our website at craftygemini.com and there is a link there where you can add your email so that we can add you to our email newsletter list. Sometimes I get messages from people asking, hey, is there a flash sale tonight? Are you going live? We always send out emails the same day with the reminder, the information of what we're going to be featuring during that live event, and then also the link so that you know you can click from that email and head right over to chat with me. All right. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope you all enjoy your weekend and happy sewing, everybody.